Amen. In the 1870s, the world was trying to rush and scientists were trying to rush to find a solution for electric light. For decades, different scientists, different inventors had tried to find a way to, uh, to make light that was sustainable, that was cost effective, and that the world could have uh, at all times of day. In the 1870s, Thomas Alva Edison and his team uh, partnered together and started working to try to, uh, to try to find a solution for this electric light. Uh, they worked and uh, they experimented and they tried with many different bulb designs. Many inventors had tried to uh, design different types of bulbs. But they would find that either it would burn too quickly and it would go out or uh, the bulb would get dark uh, by, by the electricity. Or, and they tried all sorts of different things. Thomas Edison, uh, he tried thousands of different bulb, uh, bulb models. He tried uh, thousands of different filaments to, uh, to create this light. And finally, after more than 3,000 attempts, he finally figured it out. He figured it out. They tried bamboo filament. And for the first time, they had the opportunity uh, to give light uh, to the world at all times. And just like inventors and scientists of the 1800s were trying to find a solution for light, People today all over the world are trying to find solutions for their lives. Uh, people try to fill their lives with things, uh, maybe such as, uh, as money or entertainment. Try, people try to fill uh, their lives, the emptiness that they have inside with, uh, with all sorts of different things. But today I would like to tell you that the answer uh, for life is Jesus. In your life and in mine, a lot of times there's, uh, there can be an emptiness. A lot of times, sometimes there can be a, a void that needs to be filled. And we try to fill that in a lot of ways. But Jesus makes all the difference. In Mark chapter number 1 this morning, as we start reading in verse number 40, we find that there is a man who's in desperate need. Uh, this man, he's uh, he's he's on his he's at his at his wit's end. He doesn't know uh, what to do. And in verse number forty, a man uh, with leprosy meets Jesus. And what he finds here is that Jesus makes all the difference. Today, I would like to tell you: if you're searching for something, if you're uh, if you're looking for something in your life, if there's something that seems to be missing, Jesus is the answer. And that's what we're going to see here in our passage this morning. We're going to see why uh, the difference that Jesus makes. First of all, and you should have received in your handout the notes for this morning's message, we see first of all that Jesus makes a difference because Jesus is a friend to sinners. Jesus is a friend to sinners. If you would begin reading with me in verse number 40, it says, there came a leper to him beseeching him. And kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. We're introduced here. Jesus, uh, he's been traveling around. Jesus has been teaching. Jesus has been performing miracles. And all of a sudden, in verse number 40, there's a man who shows up, unlike any person who's, pre who's met Jesus up to this point. In verse number 40, we find that this man is identified as a leper. As a leper, today it's known as modern day Hansen's disease. But in Bible times, in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, uh, leprosy was probably the most scary disease that a person could have. Uh, leprosy, if you're not familiar with it, it is a disease that uh, honestly is very disgusting. If you've seen pictures uh, where someone has scales all over their body, they'll have uh, bright spots on their skin. And uh, it's very, it's contagious and it's very, very deadly. Uh, when people would see someone, maybe uh, they would be missing hair and they'd see uh, those patches. They would see that leprosy and they'd know, hey, I need to stay away from this person or, or else they could contaminate me. Uh, leprosy was a very scary disease at this time and it was something that could immediately be identified on the outside. But what made leprosy so dangerous and so deadly is what happened on the inside. Uh, it wasn't just that uh, someone had uh, scales or scabs or bright spots all over their body. It actually attacked uh, their nervous system where uh, maybe they could not feel, they couldn't feel pain anymore. They couldn't, uh, they would lose feeling. The leprosy would attack their nerves. So while people would see leprosy on the outside and be afraid, at the same exact time, uh, deadly, a deadly disease was, was going on on the inside, destroying this person's life. And we see that he comes to Jesus and he meets Jesus. And we see that Jesus is a friend to sinners. You see, just like this leper of this day who came to Jesus, uh, you and I uh, are filled with sin. 
Uh, for some people, for, and maybe for some, yes. For others, no. Some people, you can identify sin on the outside. Uh, maybe you see them and uh, you can tell, hey, that person lived a hard life. Uh, that person has obviously had it rough. Maybe a person has uh, struggled with different things. But you know what? What's so deadly is not what you see on the outside. And if I could say to our church today uh, that if I could say this, that sometimes people come in and we say, hey, maybe that person lived a hard life and we're afraid of them. But can I tell you something that what you see on the outside, that's not what that's not what's dangerous. What's dangerous is what goes on the inside of every single one of us. The Bible says, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the, ma- the mouth speaketh. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And what's so dangerous is not what's on the outside, but what is on the inside of you and me. And that is sin. All of us are sinners. The Bible says uh, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. We are all sinful people. We are all broken people. I tell you what, if people knew some of the thoughts that go through my head sometimes, uh, it would be a scary thing. I'm glad that it all, uh, well, most of the time it stays on the inside. Whenever it comes out, it's a bad thing. I usually get myself in trouble uh, with my wife when whenever I think uh, in my head comes out of my mouth. Uh, But here we see that uh, this man, he was, honestly, this was a scary condition. As this leper comes to Jesus and can I just tell you today that for every single one of us, all of us are sinners. All of us are broken people. All of us need help today. We see the condition of this sinner. The Bible says in Psalm 51, verse number five, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We're, we were born that way. We were born sinners uh, separated from a holy God, not worthy to be, uh, not worthy to have a relationship with him, not worthy to enter into his presence. We're all sinners. I remember whenever I was growing up, uh, my, uh, my brother who's here today, my cousin who's not here today, her name's Katie. Uh, sometimes we would, we would hang out at my grandma's house and uh, I may have told this story in the past, but uh, we'd hang out at my grandma's house and we'd play all sorts of games. We'd, we'd play, uh, this was like, we were really young, so men don't judge me. We'd play uh, house uh, where, and met, I see some of the looks. Katie was older than us. And at that, at that age, whatever Katie said went. Uh, so, but uh, we would, uh, we'd play house or we'd play school. Who wants to play school, right? Whenever you're not in school, you, you play school. And we'd play school or we'd, we'd play all sorts of different games, uh, but it didn't matter what we played. It didn't matter what scenario we were in. We always had the same roles. Uh, my brother Jason and my cousin Katie, they were always, uh, they were always the cool ones. Well, maybe Katie would be the teacher and Jason would be like, uh, the teacher's pet, uh, from my perspective. And they would always label me the same way. They would always label me with the name Jimmy. Uh, now if your name is Jimmy in here this morning, I do apologize. I mean, no harm. Uh, but Jimmy was not a compliment. Uh, you see, in whatever game we were playing, if I was Jimmy, that meant that I was uh, the worst of the worst and wasn't worthy to be in the company uh, of my family members. If, if we were playing school, Katie would be the teacher. And she would be teaching away and Jason would be uh, the A student. And there I would be in the back. If I raised my hand, Jimmy, stop playing around in the back. If I would, if I would try to answer, if I would answer the question, two plus two equals four. Uh, if I, they say two plus two. David, what's Jimmy? What's the answer? If I said four, no, you're wrong. Uh, It doesn't matter what I said. It didn't matter what I did. I couldn't do anything right. Uh, If we were, if we were playing house, then I was, I was like the, this was, you know, back in the day before political correctness, I was the, I was, I mentally was handicapped. Uh, That's who I was. That I was Jimmy. Uh, That's, that's who, that's who they called me. I just, uh, and it didn't matter. And I remember I would get so upset. I would cry and I'd be like, I'm not Jimmy. And I, I I would just get really, really upset because they just labeled me that way. It wasn't, it wasn't fair. That's just, that's just what they called me. And I wasn't worthy uh, to be with anyone else. Can I tell you something? In reality today, before a holy God, before a perfect God, none of us are worthy. None of us are worthy to enter into his presence. None of us are worthy to have a relationship with God. None of us. We are all deficient. We are all handicapped before the holiness and greatness of God uh, this morning. And we see here that this leper, uh, he is in a terrible condition. 
It was a shameful condition. And in Leviticus, it tells us about leprosy and what lepers were to do. And lepers, uh, because they were they were feared and they were cont- they could be contagious. Whenever they they whenever they contracted leprosy, they were immediately cast out of society. Uh, they would go into a leper colony where where other lepers lived. They couldn't be with everyone else. If for whatever reason they had to go into town, they would have to cry out and say, unclean, unclean, basically letting everyone know, stay away. You need to stay away from me because I'm in a horrible condition. I'm a leper. And that's who we are before God. We see uh, the condition of this lep- of the sinner, but we also see the drawing of the sinner. Uh, the drawing of the sinner. You see, in verse number 40, we see that a leper, uh, it goes against social norms. It goes against, uh, it goes against anything that they were taught, what they, that they were supposed to do. This leper comes to Jesus. This leper who's supposed to stay away from everyone, this leper who is not worthy to be around other people, this leper who is feared by society, he comes to Jesus and falls before him. Now, I can tell you this, that if I were, I, whenever I read the scripture, I, I kind of put myself in their shoes and I think about, hey, if I, if I were them, where would I be at? And thinking, hey, if I were in this leper's shoes, I tell you what, I would be afraid to go out into society. I'd be afraid to go around everyone else. And someone as powerful as Jesus, uh, I would be, here, I'll get back up here and behave. Uh, uh, if I, you know, if there was Jesus, then I would, I would be fearful to come to him. Uh, maybe you've been uh, maybe you've been around uh, a, a person who's uh, maybe a celebrity or per, a person who's uh, a very a famous person in the area, and you're just a little bit intimidated by them. I remember a couple years ago I got to go to a Cowboys game, and uh, I went to the Cowboys game, and uh, my my uncle got us great great seats, 12 rows away from the field, and it was in the like the VIP section, and uh, we sat we were standing in line uh, at at a point before the game started, we were in line. And uh, there is walking right beside us, walking right by us, is Bob Lilly. Now, you may not know who Bob Lilly is, but Bob Lilly, he's a Hall of Fame uh, player for the Dallas Cowboys. I think he played in the 70s. Uh, so, but he was a defensive end. He was one of the greats. And I remember him walking by, and I recognized him. I said, wow, there's, there's Bob Lilly. And you know what I did? I, I stood in my spot. I was like, I'm not, I can't go up to Bob Lilly. <laughs> I'm not going to go try to get a picture of Bob Lilly. Like I, like I was there, I was just thinking like all of these things were going on in my head. Hey, how cool would it be if I was like, hey, Bob Lilly, come hang out with us in our, uh, while we're here. And then him buy, us, him buy us dinner or something like that. But no, I just stood there and I watched, you know, there goes Bob Lilly. For this leper, if I was in his shoes, I would be thinking, hey, there's Jesus. Uh, in the previous verses, if we were to go back and for sake of time, we're not going to do that. Jesus, uh, he's just coming out of a moment where, uh, where one of his disciples, Peter, his mother-in-law, uh, was sick and Jesus healed his mother-in-law. And whenever the people in town found out that Jesus had the power to heal, uh, people who were sick, people, uh, who, who were, who were, who were demon possessed, they were coming to Jesus and it says that Jesus, uh, healed people all night. People were just coming one after another after another. They were coming to Jesus and, and Jesus was healing them. Uh, people, who, uh, people who were demon possessed, the parents would bring uh, their demon possessed children and say, uh, hey, Jesus, would you heal? And Jesus spent all night healing people. Uh, Jesus is uh, growing famous very, very quickly. And for this leper, Jesus would be a person who would intimidate me. Uh, to think, hey, there's Jesus. He has the power uh, to heal diseases. Now, I have a disease. I, I need his help, uh, but I, I would be scared to go to him, I would think. Uh, there's Jesus. He's, he's the public speaker. We're going to talk about this in a little bit, but this is placed. You can read about this in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. You can also read the same story in Matthew chapter number 8. Uh, Jesus, in Matthew chapter number 8, Jesus has just concluded the Sermon on the Mount, which is known uh, as the greatest sermon that, was, that has ever been preached. Uh, where Jesus stood before thousands of people when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus is is a great speaker, and uh, Jesus is a great miracle worker, and Jesus has done all of these amazing things. And here, if if I'm thinking, hey, you know what, I think I'd be a little bit scared. There was something about Jesus that was different. Jesus drew him. Everything that Jesus said and everything that Jesus did said, hey, this leper is welcome here. 
And that's why Jesus was disliked by, by the Pharisees, by the religious establishment, because they said Jesus is a friend of sinners. And Jesus is drawing people to himself, people that are, people that are hurting and, and people that are broken and people that are diseased. He's drawing them to himself. And can I tell you something today? That it doesn't matter who you are this morning. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your struggles are. Jesus loves you and Jesus cares for you. And Jesus is a friend to sinners. Jesus Jesus loves you and he cares for you. And his words were, hey, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Uh, as Moses, uh, if it's there in your notes, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus was drawing people to himself. And if I could just say, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning, then at the end of this message, we're going to have something called an invitation. And all that is, is it's a time for people uh, to respond to how God speaks to their heart. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I can tell you, I know how God will be speaking to your heart because he said it in this verse, I will draw all men unto me. Uh, and if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, he will draw you and he'll say, hey, listen, uh, you need to respond to this. And, and at the end of this message, then what we're going to do is we're all just going to stand up and people are going to come down uh, to the altar and people are going to make uh, people are going to uh, make decisions and people are going to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then all you have to do is come up here and, and I'll be standing right here and you can just say, hey, I need Jesus. And we'll get somebody to show you from the Bible how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. Jesus loves you and he cares for you and he wants you to know him. If you do know Jesus as your savior, God is still drawing you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are they called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to become formed to the image of his son. Here's what he's saying. Hey, listen, whenever you got saved, God wasn't done with you. Uh, that's, that's not the end point. That's the starting point. When you trusted Jesus as your savior, it began a lifelong relationship headed straight for eternity with God. And can I tell you something this morning is that, hey, aren't you thankful that, hey, his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. And for all of us who know Jesus as our Savior, hey, listen, he's still drawing us. We need to be drawing closer to him. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. He draws sinners this morning. Here, first of all, this morning, we see that Jesus is a friend to sinners. But second, we also see this morning that Jesus has the power to save. Jesus has the power to save. In verse number 40, at the end, it says, If thou wilt, the leper comes to Jesus and he falls before him. And he says, Jesus, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Hey, Jesus, if, if you want to, uh, I need you. Jesus, uh, I've been a leper for a long time. But if you want to, I know that you have the power to save. And I see here in this passage that Jesus is the only one who can save. Jesus is the only one who can save. Here in this passage, Jesus is with a group of people, and this, this leper come, falls before Jesus, and he says, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Here's what's unique about that. In, in the King James Version, we see, uh, in, in, I'm going to start with, in modern English, most people use the word you, this is English lesson. So for those of you, if you're a high school student, I'm sorry, it's summer, but I'm going to do it to you right now, okay? Uh, there is uh, first, second, and third person, okay? So first person, I, second person, you, uh, third person, he, she, uh, they, all right? So there's first, second, third person. There's also singular and plural, all right? So taking some of you way, way back, first person singular is I, first person plural is we, Third person, third person singular could be he, uh, she. Third person plural is they. In in our English, first person, or sorry, second person singular is you. Second person plural is you. So when we say you, it could mean you or it could mean you. 
Now, I thank the Lord that we live in Texas because we have a differentiated, we can differentiate, dif, how, you know what I'm trying to say. I could say you or I could say y'all. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Texas. <laughs> But in our Bible, in, in the King James Version, thou, or thee, is second person singular. You, or ye, is second person plural. So when this leper falls before Jesus and he says, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean, here's what he's saying. Jesus you, singular, are the only one. You are the one who can make me clean. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And friend, can I tell you something? Is that you can try to fill your life with a lot of things. You can try to find hope in a lot of places. But Jesus is the way. Uh, you can find your truth if you want to out in society. But Jesus is the truth. And life can try to be lived out in a lot of different places. But Jesus is the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I heard it say this way. Hey, there's a lot of, uh, there was uh, there was a religious leader who said, "Hey, this is this. These were his last words. Uh, Work without ceasing." Here's what Jesus said on the cross: "It is finished." Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And today I'm going to tell you that this leper recognized something. And that's Jesus is the only one who has the power to save. And if you're trusting in baptism or if you're trusting in church attendance, if you're trusting in, in, in anything, if you're trusting in, in your past, if you're, trying to, uh, if you're re- trusting in cultural Christianity, what I mean by that is, hey, we've always been Christian around here. Hey, if you're trusting in any of that, then you're trusting in the wrong thing because Jesus is the only person who can save. I remember September 23rd, 2001 was the greatest day of my life when I recognized these truths that I was a sinner and that I needed a savior. And on September 23rd, 2001 at 9.30 p.m. in front of an ugly green and burgundy couch in my living room, I bowed my knee, but more importantly, I bowed my heart and I said, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need you uh, to save me. And I trusted Jesus as my savior that day. And since that day, I've always known. Jesus is my savior and then I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Jesus is the one who has the power to save. But not only do we see that Jesus has the power to save, we also see here that Jesus desires to save. Jesus desires to save. In verse number uh, 41, it's Jesus was moved with compassion. Aren't you thankful for that? Uh, that Jesus would care enough about this leper to have compassion. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will. Here's what he's saying. Hey, yes. The leper said, Jesus, if you want to, you can heal me. And here's what Jesus is saying. Yes, I want to. I want to save you. I want to heal you. I want to forgive your sins. I want to have a relationship with you. Jesus desires to save. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Psalm 145 verse number eight says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Jesus wanted to save this leper and Jesus wants to save you. Jesus desires to save but then we see that Jesus does save. It says, and as soon as he had spoken, immediately, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Jesus said, yes, I want to heal you. And then he heals him. Here's what I love about this. In the verse, it says that immediately, as soon as he had spoken, he was healed. My, my daughter, Julianne, uh, she gets really, really obsessive. So she'll like something and then uh, it's all about that for, uh, for a long, long time. So uh, for a while, it was nonstop Toy Story. Everything, everything was Toy Story. And, uh, right now, uh, she loves uh, the cartoon Beauty and the Beast. So, so we're sitting there and uh, she's, she's like, Daddy, will you watch it with me? So I'm sitting down, I'm watching it with her. And then we get to the part where the Beast, where, where, where you know, Belle cries on the beast and she's like, I love you. And then all of a sudden, uh, it's 
it was like, it's amazing. It's an eternity long. I'm sitting there, I'm watching her. It's like, okay, now it's time for the beast to turn into uh, the prince and save the day, whatever. And then all of a sudden she's like, she's crying and, and it's raining. You know, the skies are gray. We got to set this, we got to set the mood. The, the music is playing softly and, and building. And all of a sudden it's raining. And then all of a sudden the rain for, for reasons that I didn't pick up on, uh, the rain starts turning pink. Uh, so then it's, it, it's, it's pink rain. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. So, uh, maybe some of somebody will explain it to me later, but then it starts, it starts raining pink. And then all of a sudden, uh, the bell, that's her name, right? Uh, she, she looks up and it's like, oh, it's, it's pink raining. And, and she gets up and all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden the beast, he's like, he's out of it. And all of a sudden he's just like, he's moving around. And all of a sudden, uh, you, you get a zoom up of his, of his, of his paw. And all of a sudden his paw, it's like, okay, come on, let's move this along now. It's going to turn into a hand. And all of a sudden it's like, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a hand. And then it goes to his feet. Uh, and then it goes uh, to his, to his foot paws, whatever, whatever you call them. And then all of a sudden it, it like zooms up on his feet. And then all of a sudden, Wow, it turns into feet. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he goes, and then uh, he's, he's got a cape, and then the cape is all around him. And then all of a sudden, boom, he turns into a person. Can I tell you something? This is the one part where I was surprised. So there's now he's a prince, and I'm looking at and I'm like, this is the ugliest prince I've ever seen. Like, give Belle back the beast. <laughs> ugly, nappy, hair flapping everywhere. And then he's just like, here I am. And I'm like, no, <laughs> the beast was better looking, but I'm a guy. What do I know? It goes through this big, long, this big, long process of, uh, of this. But can I tell you something that whenever this leper was changed by Jesus, it wasn't like that at all. Amen. It said when Jesus spoke the words immediately, there, there, there wasn't all of this. Uh, there wasn't all of this drama. There wasn't all of this, uh, this big thing. It says Jesus spoke the words, and then immediately he was changed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Uh, behold, all things are become new. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. For by grace are you saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. That is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Can I tell you something? That whenever you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, whenever I put my faith in and trust in Jesus Christ. That changed everything for us. It, it, it was an immediate transformation that happened on the inside. And it changed everything. Jesus has the power to save. Jesus desires to save. And then when this person bowed before Jesus in faith, Jesus saved him. When this person expressed his faith in Christ, Jesus saved him. And can I tell you something that's no different today? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We, we see that uh, Jesus has the power to save. And then finally, number three this morning, we see that Jesus changes lives. Jesus changes lives. We see that this change was undeniable. In verse number 42, it says, As soon as he had spoken immediately, the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. He was cleansed. This change was undeniable. Everyone knew it. It was a change that happened on the inside. Remember, leprosy was a disease uh, that was primarily, the primary damage of leprosy happened on the inside. But you know what? You could also see it on the outside. And whenever God saved you, and whenever God saved me, he started doing a work. He started making changes. And it's something that, that this world should see. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Can I tell you something? That whenever Jesus saved you, whenever God is working in your life, you shouldn't be as grumpy as you were before. Whenever Jesus started changing you, you should be a little bit more loving than you were before. Husbands, whenever Jesus starts changing us, our wives should notice a difference. Hey, hey, you love a little bit more like Jesus. Hey, whenever you come home, there's a little bit more joy. 
Hey, in our, in our home, there's a little bit more peace. Hey, the, hey I've noticed you've, you've, you're more patient now. Maybe, maybe at work, maybe you're coming in uh, grumpy all the time, and uh, maybe now you're a little bit more patient. You're a little bit more kind. Hey, listen, that is the work. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is that work that Christ does on the inside that starts flowing outward on the outside. Whenever we are filled with the Holy Spirit, he changes fundamentally who we are. And the world can see it. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. This change was undeniable. But I also notice here that this change was uncontainable. This change was undeniable, and this change was uncontainable. This man is healed, and uh, it is undeniable that he, he's different now. This, this disease that was on the outside, and you can see it with scales all over his body, the scales are gone. And now Jesus says to him, and, and honestly, uh, we, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with the text. Uh, I've, I studied it quite a bit, and, and this is honestly a, a part that is a little bit more difficult. Verse number 44, Jesus says, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Here's what Jesus was saying. Hey, this is the law. The law is that you go before the priest, and the priest pronounces you cleansed. So go do that. And God does, uh, God said, hey, listen, this is, this is what the law said. This is what you need to do. Go show yourself to the priest and you'll be cleansed. Here's what I love about this. Jesus is our priest. And whenever you trust Jesus as your savior, uh, he declares us justified. Uh, he declares us righteous from Romans chapter five and verse number one says, he is our priest who declares us uh, righteous, positionally and holy before God because of his work, because of his blood that covers our sins. So Jesus is our priest and he says, hey, go show yourself to the priest and be declared cleansed. And I'm so thankful that, that God declared us righteous when we trusted him as our savior. And then he goes, hey, don't tell anyone, go show yourself to the priest. But here's what the leper does. It says that the leper goes and he tells everybody all about it. Hey, he, he, can't, I, he can't help himself. He said, hey, listen, listen, here, here's what Jesus did for me. I, I was nervous. I got to tell you, I was nervous to go to Jesus. I didn't know uh, what I was going to do. But then uh, finally, I just, uh, I just stepped out in faith and I kneel before Jesus and I express faith. I said, Jesus, you're the only one who can save me. And if you'll, if you'll save me, then, uh, then please save me. And Jesus said, I, yes, I want to save you. And he, and he healed me and he, he changed me forever. And I got to tell you, Jesus makes all the difference. And that's what that leper was going around everywhere he was going. He was saying, Hey, listen, look what Jesus did for me. And Jesus told that leper, hey, go, don't go tell anybody. Go show yourself to the priest. And he went and, tell, went, and, he went and told everyone. And church, can I tell you something? That Jesus didn't tell us to not go tell anybody. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, hey, share it with everybody. Tell everybody what Jesus did for you. Tell everybody the difference that Jesus made in your life. Last year, I got a, um, some people are going to laugh because I, I, was, I was recruiting for it. I got a, uh, don't laugh at me, I got a, it's called a full focus planner. So I got this planner. Uh, I'm, I'm not naturally an organized person. Uh, I'm, I'm naturally a very disorganized person. And, uh, but last year, uh, I got this planner where you write everything down and uh, you have everything all in one place. And I got, I got excited about it. I got it. And you know what? Uh, after I got it, I don't think that this is exaggeration. Uh, most of the time, if I exaggerate, uh, my wife lets me know, hey, you're exaggerating. She's never, she's never told me I'm exaggerating on this. I feel like this made me at least twice as productive uh, and at least twice as organized getting this planner. Uh, so... So I got this planner. I loved it. I'm telling people about it. I was telling, I was telling Brother Don about it. I was telling Brother Austin about it. I was telling, uh, in staff meetings, I'm carrying it into staff meetings, writing down on it. Uh, and there I am. I have it. And lo and behold, those people that I'm sharing my life with, they're making fun of me. They're laughing at me for my planner. Like, I, I'm geeking out. I'm getting all nerdy about this planner, uh, sharing it with everybody. But you know what? I didn't care. I was like, hey, this planner, uh, it's been a big, big help to me. I really like this thing. Hey, it's, it's awesome. It's, uh, and that they're, so they're, they're, I don't care that they're laughing at me. I'm just telling them all about it. So then, all of a sudden, Brother Don walks into church with a planner. 
and then I got through through a mix-up. Uh, they 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 gave me. They ended up giving me an extra planner. So uh, they they had an issue on their end, and because of their issue on their end, they charged me too much. Uh, they refunded it to me, and then they gave me an extra planner. So I was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna get brother Jason on it. So I go and I'm just like, I'm gonna be sneaky. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the planer. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I have this extra one. Here you go. And then here's what he says to me. He goes, hey, listen, uh, you know I made fun of you for it, but I told Aaron the other day I think I'm gonna get one. <laughs> for a year, people have been making fun of me, and I'm just saying, hey, you know what? I love my planer. I don't care. Hey, you know what? A lot of times we, we, we get so worried and we get so concerned about what people think. Hey, Jesus made a lot bigger difference in my life than any planner ever could. And we just need to tell everybody about it. Maybe you say, Brother David, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I, I, if I got into, if I had a conversation with somebody, if I started talking to somebody about the Lord and somebody said, hey, I've got all of these questions and uh, I, I wouldn't know how to answer those questions. Can I tell you something that people, people can argue and people have for, for hundreds and uh, people have argued for thousands of years about uh, this, what the Bible means about this and what the Bible means about that. And people can argue all day long about a lot of things, but you know what they can't argue with? They can't argue with the difference that Jesus has made in your life. So just share with people what Jesus has done for you. Hey, Jesus made all the difference. And then live out that change before them. Jesus makes all the difference. The 1870s, Thomas Alva Edison figured out that if he could put bamboo filament into a light, then it would cheaply, efficiently, and productively uh, create electric light. And he started his own company and he started selling his light bulbs. And pretty soon, today, we are the beneficiaries of that. Uh, we are meeting here in a room uh, without, really without windows because we have electric light. Could you imagine what would have happened if Edison would have said, hey, you know what, I, uh, uh, I solved this, I figured this out, I got this light, uh, I, I invented this light bulb, I figured it out how it works, now I'm gonna go home and just light up my room. And he didn't do anything with it. You know how terrible that would be? None of us would have light. But he said, hey, you know what? I just got to share it with everybody. Can I tell you something? Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And we need to get it out to everybody. Everyone, every person needs the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know him as your Savior, I told you at the beginning that you're going to have an opportunity to receive him. That's going to come in just a moment. If you know Jesus as your Savior, hey, he's still the answer. Sometimes in my life I'm guilty of, hey, you know what? I received Jesus as my Savior. Now it's time to move on to other things. Hey, Jesus is still the answer. Whatever you struggle with, whatever hurt you feel, Jesus is still the answer. Jesus makes all the difference. If you would all bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment told you at the beginning I was going to give you an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. And I want to give you that opportunity this morning. So I'd like to ask just a couple of questions. And uh, we're all bowing our head and closing our eyes just so everyone has privacy, just, just, just you and the Lord. But I'd like to ask you this question. We'd say, David, you know, you talked about knowing Jesus as my Savior. And you know, I, I really am not sure that I do know Jesus as my Savior. But I'd like to know, will you pray for me? I promise I will. I'll pray for you. I won't call you out. I won't embarrass you. But if you say, David, I'm not sure that Jesus is my Savior. I do not know for sure, 100%, that I would go to heaven if I were to die today. But I would like to know those things. Would you pray for me? Would you raise your hand? Would you just raise your hand? I will not call you out. I will not call you out. Thank you. I see those hands. I see those hands. If you say, David, I'm not for sure. I see those hands. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. I see those hands. I will pray for you. Thank you. You can put those hands down. Just a second, I'm going to do what I promise. I'm going to pray for you. But friend, this is a decision that you have to make for yourself. This is the decision that you have to choose to make. Just like this leper said, made the decision where he said, Jesus, you're the only one who can save me. So I'm asking you to save me. You have to make that decision as well. So whenever I pray, whenever I'm done praying, we're all going to, we're going to stand to our feet. 
the piano will begin to play. And if you'll come to me, I will, I will point you to someone who can show you for sure, how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven and how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then church families, if you're a Christian, Christian, if you know Jesus, but you've been living, living life for other things, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Focus your eyes upon Jesus this morning. Uh, I'm going to pray for you, and then we're all going to stand together.